Okay, well I've got a 10 minutes. Um, <clears throat> I'm Willie Campbell and I work at Otago Polytechnic in Dunedin and that's the equivalent of a TAFE with you really, although we do higher education as well. And my particular work at the moment is in recognising contextual learning. And I can almost guarantee that any single one of you has had a point in their lives where you have wanted your experience and your knowledge and your skills and your awareness to count for something publicly and, and for whatever reason it has not been acknowledged. So our business is to support people to have their contextual learning valued in a formal sense. We carry out a process that is a very individual process, although sometimes people work in groups with us because they come in in a group or we have a workplace group that we work with. And we move around about in various ways trying to pull out of people properly articulated versions of stuff they kind of know about but think is just common sense or not worth talking about or my goodness me why would anybody want to know about that and we finish up with a balance of three pieces of assessment material that goes before a panel of two or three assessors. So there's a, a piece that's a presentation, it might be a 20 minute talk, it might be a PowerPoint slide, it might be a video, it might be someone talking to a painting they've done, it doesn't matter, but it's them giving self-report about why they work in the way they do and why they know that that makes sense and where they have done it in terms of case studies. Um, so the presentation is one aspect. Then there's a section of the uh, assessment that we c choose to call professional conversation. So it's a not so much a question and answer time, but a discussion time. And the assessors and the candidates for assessment have conversations about what has been presented. It's always accompanied by a portfolio of supporting evidence. To date they have tended to be paper portfolios but like everybody else we're moving much much more to e-portfolios or digital portfolios. The kind of qualifications that this process works best for actually range across a huge lot. We have early level um, people who are in the construction industry. Now their work will in general consist of photographs and on-site conducted tours of pieces of work that they've done. <clears throat> we have people who work in business and business administration and their work will tend to be quite heavily um, weighted towards the portfolios because they're very good at gathering pieces of evidence. They're less comfortable with presentations and so often the professional conversation part of their assessment is much richer and bigger than their formal presentation. By the time you get to degree level things it actually becomes a whole lot easier because we do not assess against this paper, that paper and the other paper. We assess against the attributes that are expressed in the graduate profile of the qualification and I'll read you the ones from the Bachelor of Social Services so that you can get the feel for what I'm talking about. There's eight attributes. It says graduates of the Bachelor of Social Services will have the ability to effectively integrate theory and practice and be able to apply this to working with people in a practice situation. They will have the ability to identify ethical issues and maintain professional standards consistent with the principles of bioethics. They will have developed a cohesive, integrated model of practice inclusive of professional standards and reflective practice. They will have experience with current trends and theory within the provision of social services and the ability to integrate these into the practice setting. They will have experience with and or the ability to effectively utilise local and national networks, resources and organisations. 
They will have an integrated model of practice which incorporates the unique cultural context of Aotearoa New Zealand and includes appropriate assessment strategies, interventions and tools for maximising the delivery of services to diverse populations. They will have the ability to analyse and critique current literature, research and developments in the field of social services. They will have experience of the application of relevant legislation to work with people within social services. So they're quite high conceptual statements, but they do translate very well from people's experience, particularly if they are supported well, to develop that articulation and that insight and understanding. Often the toughest bit is to get them to read some relevant theory because typically they will be people who have worked, they might have gone away on a day course here and there, they might have done short courses, but typically they do not have in their working lives the luxury of reflecting on critical reflection and theory and, and research evidence. And so the biggest part of our work after encouraging them to express themselves and do crazy things like mind maps and balloons and fishbone diagrams and whatever it takes is to get them to realise that there is some theoretical underpinning that often matches their experience or often challenges their experience and doesn't match it easily. Yeah. So that in a nutshell is what we do and it's very successful work in New Zealand and we do it up and down the country by distance mostly. Most of our people don't live in Dunedin where we live and so we do it through media like this, we do it by phone, we do it by email and we do it by simply sending bits of paper to each other um, and in any one given year we would be likely to have as many graduates in some of our qualifications as the actual teaching schools would have. Okay, I think that's probably my 10 minutes. <laughs>